I'm Daniel Zengel with PRP Labs, joined by Don Lipscomb, and we're going to be discussing how PRP can be used to help patients with degenerative disc disease. Uh, we've actually spoken on a similar topic before that was using PRP injections in the paraspinal muscles mm -hmm. uh, that showed that was one way to help patients with de de degenerative disc disease. It's a well, lot of Ds. It is, certainly. <laughs> How about that alliteration? Yeah. Um, in this study, there's a different approach, uh, perhaps a riskier approach, but there was no adverse side effects, mm -hmm. and that was with an intradiscal PRP injection. Uh, it's a very good study we looked at. They did a double-blind placebo control. Um, and uh, Don, maybe you can tell us a bit more about this. Sure. So um, the invertible disc, or I IVD, mm -hmm. I think, uh, accounts for as much as 40% of all cases of um, chronic back pain. Okay. So this is something that's going to be very persistent that maybe, I mean, more more than likely you will either be affected by this or you will know someone right. that's affected by this. Um, and so this is also the largest avascular structure in the entire human body. Okay. So it relies on actually passive diffusion for nutrition. Mm -hmm. um, and so it just generally has a very poor prognosis for healing. Right. You know, it's not getting a blood supply. Right, basically. yeah. You, d you don't hear about a lot of people reversing uh, mm -hmm. degenerative discs. It's, exactly. It's usually trying to manage the pain, trying to help people s reduce the, the progression, mm -hmm. um, but you know, rarely is it actually where patients will see long-term improvements with traditional medical approaches. Exactly. And so, I mean, since for instance, no blood supply, that means you're not going to get platelets in there, mm -hmm. for instance. Uh, so, this, so the authors wanted to see if a single injection of PRP into the invertebral discs that had um, showed signs of degradation, mm -hmm. if that would actually improve pain and function right those patient outcomes so right. um, they enrolled 47 patients and this study was double blind randomized controlled so they they kind of covered all their bases yeah. so it's a good study a good study <laughs> <laughs> so, so 29 actually received the PRP treatment and um, 18 were in the control group and so the the way that they did this was so uh, they, well, the patients were undergoing something called a discography, which is basically they're just imaging mm -hmm. th this area. Um, so they, I th believe they laid face down. Mm -hmm. So then they injected um, one to two milliliters of contrast agent in mm -hmm. everyone. Right. All the patients received that. Right. However, uh, the, the, the patients that were in the PRP group, they then received an injection of one to two milliliters into the disc of PRP. Right. Yeah. So... And the control group just received another one to two milliliters of contrast agent. Right. So that's the way that they set it up. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, the the PRP that they used, they they did a very good job of reporting how it was prepared. It used a commercial kit, which mm -hmm. is the Harvest kit, um, which is actually, by all things considered, a pretty good PRP kit. Um, there was a, a study we looked at in another video done by Bioscience Research Associates, mm -hmm. where they compared all the different kits. Uh, Harvest, I believe, had something like a 62% platelet recovery rate. What we can tell from the study is they started with 30 milliliters of blood, ended up with about 3.4 milliliters of PRP. Based on that platelet recovery rate, we can assume they achieved roughly a 5.3 times mm -hmm. platelet concentration level. And as Don mentioned, this is just a one-time injection, giving these uh, patients one to two milliliters of PRP. Exactly. And, and it's per disc. So some of the patients mm -hmm. got it just in one disc and some got it in two discs if they had two affected discs. Exactly. And so, um, after, so after eight weeks, they followed up with these mm -hmm. patients and there are statistically significant improvements um, in the PRP group over mm -hmm. the control group. Right. So they had less pain, higher functioning, and overall satisfaction. Right. And they actually, um, the PRP group responded so positively that they offered um, the PRP injection to the control group if they chose. Yeah, good guy researchers yeah. w looking out for their patients. I exactly. appreciate that. And, and then also, they, this study did a follow-up for a year and, mm -hmm. and for some of the patients even longer. And the, the patients that were in the control group um, at, versus PRP, they, the PRP group showed statistically significant improvement at eight weeks and then even at a year and longer. Mm -hmm. So th this really is showing some long-term improvement in these patients. Yeah, I think, I think this definitely holds a lot of weight and I can't wait to see where else this goes. Absolutely. It, it's also worth mentioning this was, these injections were done under fluoroscopic guidance. Mm -hmm. So hopefully there aren't any physicians out there trying to do blind oh, no, intradiscal please, injections. No. Yes. Um, <laughs> So yeah, there, there are no adverse side effects. Nope. Uh, we're, we're seeing good healing and yeah, mm -hmm. hopefully we'll see more research on this uh, and it'll become a, a more common option for oh, patients definitely. out there.
Much better than surgery. Yeah, better than spinal fusion, yeah. that's for sure. <laughs> All right, Don, thanks again. Uh, we have a couple more videos coming up today, so stick around, and we'll be right back. Be right back.